Look, let me tell you this straight. The data analytics space has completely changed and most teams are stuck using a bunch of tools that make life way harder for data analysts than it needs to be. This video aims to show you what is really happening in the data analytics space today and my take on how to be better analysts than others. Most data analytics professionals are too concentrated to work on spreadsheets or reports and don't see the bigger picture that can actually make them advanced in their careers. Way faster compared to knowing an extra formula in Excel because I promise you it does not happen have to be this messy. All right, before we jump straight into it, let's talk a bit about how the heck we ended up here in the world of data analytics. Over the past decade, but really in just the last couple of years, data analysts have gotten massively more technical. We are not talking about fooling around with Tableau or Excel all day anymore. People like myself in the job are really using a lot more their command line, for example. We are using GitHub, basically adopting developer tools that were never really built for data in the first place. The the reason is simple, we are asking so much more of data teams nowadays, but the majority of data focused tools haven't exactly caught up. In a lot of cases, we are still using spreadsheets, even though we want data professionals to act like full on software engineers. And let's trace it back. About a decade ago, Amazon launched Redshift and that kickstarted a major data warehouse revolution. It totally changed the game by making storage crazy cheap, which paved the way for a lot of new tools. We got extra Action tools like Fivetron, we got transformation tools like Alteryx and DBT, and of course a ton of stuff at the visualization layer like Tableau and Power BI. For the first time, you could get insights from all of your data super fast and reliably. It was a real revolution if you were in data because businesses were suddenly getting more eyes on more data than they would ever seen before. Even better, you didn't have to rely on pure software engineers. People who really got both their business needs and how their data should be put together could handle this new wave of data tools. And that combo of technical people plus deep business context was a powerful advantage. And it's basically what created this new role called analytics engineer in the first place, a hybrid that pulled together all the best parts of engineering and also analytics. Because of that, data analysts ended up juggling a ridiculous amount of work, everything from building or managing data sets to shaping data for BI, business intelligence and self-service analytics. Honestly, we became a lot more like real developers, so I'm just going to call them data developers. The unfortunate twist is that somewhere during that evolution, we ended up with a bit of a mess. Sure, we have amazing technologies these days, but if you look at how it's all pieced together, it feels more like a pile of different parts rather than some streamlined machine. And let me give you a picture of what it actually looks like for a data analyst like myself right now. A pretty normal task is building a fresh model in DBT and then serving it up uh, for an end user via a BI tool. That might sound simple, but the actual process is pretty tricky. First, you need to write your SQL in your text editor, but maybe you find mistake or you need to test the code. Then you get into BigQuery Console to run your SQL and check it if it works over there. Once it behaves in BigQuery, you copy and paste it back into DBT in another tab. At some point, you realize you need test and documentation, so you add that into your DBT file, basically repeating that back and forth a bunch of times. Then you commit those changes into GitHub uh, merge them and store all of it for future reference. Next, you actually need to compile your DBT project. Maybe you run it in Airflow or some other orchestration tool every single morning so that the data is constantly refreshed. And while that job is doing its thing, you are also copying parts of the code into Tableau or Power BI to build your dashboards for your end users. But surprise, the chart you create is not quite what you expected. So you bounce right back to square one. Seriously, that's a lot of steps for what should be a small tweak. So the thing is that data analysts or data developers are meant to understand the business questions and figuring out how to answer it with data, but not really wrestling with a never-ending chain of weird tasks uh, just to keep everything in sync. Ideally, you would do that mechanical bits very quickly, but we are nowhere near that reality. So we are stuck with these time-consuming tasks that take most of our days. So you got the problem. Now let's talk about how to fix this. And I'm telling you this so that in case you are already part of the data analytics industry or you are aiming to join it, then you can propose these types of solution in the company. One big piece is what is called semantic layer. A major bottleneck in most data setups is not having a single 
crystal clear set of definitions for common metrics and dimensions. That's where the semantic layer comes in. Picture it like a central dictionary where uh, both warehouse and BI tools can reference. One place where you define things like daily active users or churn rate or monthly revenue. When every single team is pulling from the same set of definitions, you will not have that annoying scenario where you have three dashboards that all claim to measure revenue, but somehow produce three different numbers. On top of that, a semantic layer gives you a lot of future proving. You can uh, plug in new tools or shift workflows around without rewriting the same definitions in 10 different SQL queries or code files. If you ever tried dbt, which I use daily in my job, you have seen how a shared semantic model can make your life a million times easier. It might sound like a nice to have, but let's be honest, having a single source of truth can be a difference between order and an absolute chaos in your data setup. On top of that, another totally possible fix is pretty straightforward. Start treating data analysts exactly like software engineers. Bring them in as a first class citizens when it comes to tooling, community and the culture around the work. We can learn so much from software engineers. For example, we're using Git for collaboration and governance, so even huge teams can commit code without impacting each other. IDEs that let you code fast, like the new cursor, which is becoming so popular for coding and can really make you much more efficient uh, thanks to the AI that is assisting you in every step. And even CI CD pipelines that let you push updates to end users in no time at all. All of these dev practices came together over the, the last decade and it's what makes software engineering so streamlined. That's the kind of ecosystems we need for data teams. So treat data development like a system that you're always optimizing rather than some clunky step-by-step -step process. If you are someone part of a data team, ask yourself, how many different tools just to make one fix in my data pipeline? Can we actually collaborate without stepping on each other's toes? And maybe most importantly, how fast can we go from I have an idea uh, to uh, this is running in production? I seriously believe this is the year data development becomes a top priority. We will apply the lessons from software engineering, smooth end-to-end -end workflows, a single semantic layer, and genuine investment in data dev. And the payoff of all of this is data teams that they can finally deliver the big promise of modern data stacks without getting trapped in some of these repetitive tasks. So if there is one core message I want to leave you with is this. Stop imagining data development as a nice, uh, neat, linear process, but uh, see more like a flywheel, a cycle you can tune and improve so everything feeds back into the system. When you picture your process as a simple line, every time you tweak a dashboard or update a metric, you're basically starting from zero. You open the warehouse, you fix the SQL, you update the model, and so on. Whereas in a flywheel model, uh, each improvement just loops back around into your existing system and you define a transformation once, test it, deploy it, and instantly see the changes in your BI tool. You don't have to make the changes in all steps, you make it once and the whole will update accordingly. And so just to say this in a different way, in a linear model, every change requires repeating the same steps. You update SQL, test, deploy, fix the dashboard. Whereas in a flywheel model, uh, updates flow automatically through the system, saving uh, time and ensuring accuracy. By shifting to a flywheel approach, you remove the friction, you deliver insights faster and make sure data teams focused on high impact work rather than uh, constant maintenance. And if you're a beginner in data analytics, you will probably encounter these problems. And if you are already a data analytics professional like myself, you probably share the same frustrations. So in both cases, these are my key takeaways that you can discuss with your coworker. So instead of writing the same SQL over and over, create one definition for things like revenue or active users. And here you can use dbt, uh, looker or power bi measure functions to store uh, reusable metrics. Step Number two is to learn to work like a software engineer. So data work is not just about writing queries, it's about collaborating and improving. And so you can use tools like GitHub to save and track changes in your work. And you can use a SQL editor like VS Code, not just a BI tool, to write and test queries faster. Number three, automate repetitive tasks. And so stop running the same SQL manually every day let automation handle it. And so you can set up a scheduled queries in the query or use dbt cloud to refresh data automatically. Or you can also use BI tools dashboards instead of static reports. Number four, give business teams self-service access. So instead of answering the same questions over and over, let other people explore data on their own. You can set up a pre-built dashboards in Looker, Tableau or Power BI 
or use a simple clear naming for data so non-technical people can find what they need. And number five, continuously improve based on feedback seen. If a dashboard is not useful, update it instead of creating a new one from scratch. And then you can track which reports people actually use and delete the ones they don't. And also you can set up alerts for anomalies so you can catch issues before leadership asks about them. Maybe you've got a totally different opinion or maybe you love this approach. Either way, I would seriously love to see what you think in the comments. And as always, if you found at least one useful information in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next ones. Also, in case you want to learn more about data analytics, I put together a video where I teach pretty much all I learned in my six years of experience as a data analytics lead. There is a huge value compressed in only one video, so make sure to check it out at the link that you see here on the screen. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.